Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the Advanced VR Framework version 3. In this episode, I want to talk about the keyboard widget. The keyboard is just a small utility widget that can be quite handy in times. Here we have a few examples of the keyboard widgets. The first example is just a regular keyboard. So if I press these buttons, I can see that text appears. It also has um, all the features that you would expect of a keyboard. So for example, capital letters and even special, uh, special letters. And I can even use the backspace. Now, the key system is pretty agile. Using the same keys, I can, uh, for example, uh, create this numpad. This numpad is created um, or is designed to communicate with everything it is attached to. So if I, for example, now press these buttons, it behaves just as you would expect a numpad to behave. And we have our interaction. So um, let's take a look at uh, how the keyboard could work in the editor. So here inside the editor, we can now create ourselves a new custom keyboard. And uh, to do that, let's just create an actor and call that custom keyboard. And if we go in here, we can add ourselves a widget um, using the widget component. Um, there's uh, another tutorial vi uh, video on the widget uh, component. So definitely check that out. And uh, now we have to add a widget class. So if we take a look inside our widgets, we can have our keyword widgets here, which uh, come pre-made. And uh, we already have a set of keyword uh, type widgets. So for example, this is for entering an IP address. This is basically for multi-user. Um, this is a normal keyboard, for example. And this is a normal numpad. Obviously, you can create your own keyboards just by editing these widgets or, duplica or duplicating these widgets and sorting the key around so as, as you might like. So you can easily exchange those keys. You can set the values of those keys. For example, if this is not supposed to be um, one, but is, for example, supposed to be, um, let's say, L or something. Um, and then we, we can set that this key is being, uh, has another meaning. But I will set it back to one, just so I don't get that mixed up. And that is also supposed to be one. Perfect. And uh, now if you want to use that uh, widget, we just have to enter that into the widget component here. And that was, uh, I'll use the IP address one um, just to make things a bit clearer. Um, I think it has a layout of uh, 640 by 800, um, but obviously you can change that. That's basically normal widget um, appliances. And I'll make it a bit smaller so I can, I can deal with the size. So, and the only thing, and this is also being explained in the, in the widget tutorial, um, the widget uses a recursive widget selection. So you have to uh, check that mark for the keyboard. And now if we go to that blueprint and we'll drag it in, you can see that we can already use it. And it already tries to interact with us. Now, uh, for a keyboard or any key, uh, keys, we obviously want to try to recognize what keys have been pressed. So uh, to retrieve that information, I'll make that quick example. I'll get the user widget object of the, of the widget component, which means that we want to get our widget ourselves and cast that to a keyboard. Yes. And I'll quickly attach that to begin play. So we want that to be used from begin play. And uh, now we can assign ourselves a key button pressed. And every time we press a button on that uh, keyboard, this will be executed. And to kind of visualize that, I'm just 
going to quickly create a text render on the keyboard itself. Pull that up a bit, put that to let's say 50. Um, put that centered. Now this should be more than visible. And of that text render, I can simply set the text with whatever has been pressed. So for example, the string. And now if I hit play, I can see that the number changes according to what I entered here. Um, we also have special buttons. Um, that comes very much into play if we if we want to use special keys. So we uh, not only do we get a string, um, but of course the backspace doesn't really contain a string when when it's being sent. Um, but we can uh, behave accordingly depending on what happens um, on on the key that we got sent. So this would be the s uh, the the backspace key. That comes there, and for example, if the backspace key has been set, we want to do something else. Um, so, if if it's not being set, we still want to print the, uh, the string. But if we if, if the backspace key has been has been pressed, then uh, we maybe want to type something. Yeah, let's say um, something else. Uh, this of course has to be connected to the text render. Now if you press, something else will appear. And there's a categorization whether a key is a functional key or a um, or a normal key. So you can use that separation to be, for example, if, if you want to input the text, uh, you, uh, so if it's not a functional key, it's not a normal key press, then you want to, for example, do that. And whenever the key is a functional key, then you maybe want to, uh, want to distinguish, okay, which key could have been pressed, could have been, it be an escape or could have been, a, a backspace or could it be uh, could be a shift and uh, then you can distinguish special keys by doing that so you could for example okay um, escape has been pressed and then uh, do do that and because as this only activates if it's a functional key if it's not a functional key then you can still just enter the, the text accordingly Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing because basically the keyboards aren't very confusing and they can be a very, very handy e tool to, to let you input some combination of, of text. And um, yes, this is basically everything that I wanted to show in this episode. And I hope you can put the keyboards to good use.